Kia ora. Thanks, Emery. O tēnā tātou te whare. Um, tuatahi ake me mihi katika ki a koutou, ngā taringa. I are are mai ki a hui tēnei wā. I are are mai ki a māua ko Waiaria. Um, he tika me mihi ki a hui te tuakana, nā ui timata. Um, Mākou te whakamutunga a o tō māua kōrero e pāna ki tēnei kaupapa ngā tohu. Um, kia ora everybody, if you weren't here for Waiaria's talk, mine isn't going to make sense, so you're welcome. <laughs> um, but I suppose Waiaria spoke about the, the knowledge and the practices that we sought to reclaim. And so the side that I will talk to you about is how we worked on the preservation of that through different different ara, different ways. So I'm just going to go see what I've got on my... I actually haven't seen this presentation for a year and a half, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> um, okay, so as you can imagine, if you're in a research kaupapa and um, you're developing knowledge and you're developing um, lots of different kōrero and different case studies and different places, there's going to be lots of different outputs from that rangahau. And so I suppose we had so many different hua or different um, outputs that came from the research itself. And some of them are up here. Oh, is this a... Nope, that doesn't work. Okay, cool. Um, this one over here, Waiaria talked about the observations in the monthly pūmahara that we did with the whānau. And so every month when we came together, we recorded it on Zoom. We, Waiaria or I took notes in an Excel spreadsheet. You don't want to see those. <laughs> we asked the whānau to take photos of the things they were observing if it was possible. And we collated all of their photos. And then this was what was produced. So this is an example of one one month's observations in Tauranga Moana, um, which, because we were also practicing the observation in our spaces as well, and we don't want to share the whānau stuff with you, that's theirs, like Waiaria said, so this is one of ours, but I think the c it's kind of cool to talk through the components of it. So at the top, we have the name of the fetu that is present in the rangi for that marama. Underneath that, we have a different uh, kaupeka of water. So that was another layer of, of maramataka that Wai um, didn't mention, but it was another component of our rangahau that we looked at and where the water was in its cycle in Taiao. Underneath that, you can see it's this, it looks heaps cooler on here. And <laughs> um, the colours are a bit weird up there, but you can see three kind of circles and a scale. And so that was a, a depiction of where Tamanui Te Rā was in relation to his two wives of winter and summer, which is a seasonal, seasonal um, a way that we look at seasons according to Tamanui Te Rā. And then underneath that, there's three kind of sections, rangi, whenua, wai. And what we wanted, like, obviously we had lots of words that were recorded, but I suppose those summaries, we wanted them to be visual. That's why the pictures are there to demonstrate the observations and when you've got 12 of those in a row it's actually really cool to see how the seasons change and it's, um, I mean I don't think it's novel, I've got a tuakana pelika in the corner there smirking away because she's done this with her communities for years now, so it's not like a new thing but I think it's quite a powerful way to represent all of that kōrero uh, um, that the whānau gathered themselves. Uh, and I'll let the whānau speak for themselves because they're in the room. <laughs> um, but these were some of the fam fav my favourite outputs that came from the research. Alongside that, um, and in our process, we kind of, as we do, I think, as Ngai Māori in Rangahau, we gather kōrero. And we were lucky to work with mātanga, we were lucky to work with pūkenga, uh, we were lucky to work with pū kōrero from different whānau. One of them sitting at the back there, Matua Wayne. Uh, from Ngātaki, and we were able to create videos, capture him on video, uh, well, audio, capture drone footage, capture um, video footage of our wānanga of those times we, when we, like, ituhura mātou ki taiao, when we went out into the spaces that we were. And we were able to create videos that preserved that knowledge for those whānau. Of course, it's for them, so it's not on here. <laughs> Um, some of the other things, we wrote reports and we made posters 
um, as you do as a researcher. And another thing that came out of our kaupapa was thinking about how do we preserve knowledge, not just in a digital format, but how can that support us, but in ways that are Māori. And I think if we think about the ways that our tūpuna have handed us knowledge, it is in Moteatea, it is in Karakia, uh, it is in Waiata, it is in Korero Tukuiho in Puraku. And so these two videos, I won't play them, but they are um, they were gifted to the Kaipapa from our bro Terere Kohu. Um, well, one of them actually, Ira Ira, and that's a Karakia, a Tamanui Tera Karakia that he wrote, that he composed and gifted to the kaupapa to help embed the knowledge that had been reclaimed. So it wasn't just about creating the video of it, but actually there's a karakia there now that each one of us can go and use in our spaces. So, uh, oh, I've got a <laughs> um, I don't want to talk about this too much because I will leave that for Uncle Wayne, but this is an example of um, the whānau up north who created their own maramataka dials from our kōrero in the Rangahau. Um, with the, p the specific purpose of actively nurturing mokopuna and the knowledge that was reclaimed. So, um, why well talked about the digital preservation? Um, and so I'll go into this a little bit more. Um, it was, I think the kaupapa was originally <coughs> called Te Tāhuhu Matatau. Um, it was affectionately renamed throughout the process as Te Pātaka Kōrero um, when thinking about what we might, how our tupuna preserved kai, it was in our pātaka kōrero to maintain longevity of that kai, and so he pātaka kōrero tēnei, or he pātaka kai tērā, he pātaka kōrero tēnei. Uh, and there was three kind of components of the pātaka that were really important. Actually, let me take a step back. Regan, who's sitting in the front of um, the room here, was core at, at the beginning of this kaipapa, and it travelled from Regan to Kane to me. So I am only the tainer of this kaupapa, <laughs> standing up talking about it, but I'm just the last man standing. <laughs> um, so, e mihi ana ki a koe brau, o tira ki a Kane, um, me o kōrua mahi. Um, so, inside of the Pātaka kōrua, when we think about digital preservation, it's quite, I want to say scary. There's a lot of kind of anxiousness around taking our kōrero tuku iho and putting it in a digital place. Um, and I think that it's warranted because it takes a lot of care and thought to create a space that has the right protections. And that's not a protection to keep people out, but it is protection to make sure that it is utilised in the correct way if it is to be utilised at all. So there's sort of two sides to the story, right? We want to reclaim and preserve, but then the questions begin to be for who, how do they get access, you know, who decides that, because it's not for us, for me as a researcher to make any of those calls. So I think from our point of view, these were some of the key things that we worked on, was intuitive access. I don't know about you, but sometimes some of us are a little bit digitally... Um, challenged <laughs> um, so we wanted to make it as easy as possible um, we wanted to utilize other avenues that digital formats can provide um, to help us navigate the information inside of the Pataka Kōrero um, and something I think that comes intuitively to us is sp spatial so maps we have tūtohu whenua um, we have, yeah, so we kind of understand maps, so mapping was a part of the pātaka. And then collections, and collections is really just how do we group different um, kōrero that are inside of the pātaka so that it's easy to find. Uh, and then a big kaupapa is around permissions and connections. So some of the kōrero that was gathered at the beginning of the pātaka by Regan with whānau from Tauranga Moana, I believe, was that two big things that they were worried about was who has access 
and then also how can they connect to other people doing the similar kind of mahi that they're doing because it can feel very lonely as kaitiaki doing mahi in your whenua when you're just the only one out there picking the titiko. <laughs> so those were two things, again two sides of sort of the same coin there, how do we protect but also how do we connect with others. Um, so I can't show you the live version so we've got screenshots here. <laughs> um, but I suppose these are just some of the elements of this is what it looks like aside from that big blue box um, inside the Pataka Kōrero and across the top there you can see that there's lots of different ways that you can search inside of the Pataka. You can use keywords, you can use like location, so the mapping element, also dates um, and then genealogy, so whakapapa, you could arrange your kōrero in a um, genealogical manner and use that to navigate uh, and then concepts. Um, obviously everything was searchable by words, um, there was sort of a Google search engine if you can imagine that, that's what the search bar did, but there was also the opportunity to filter your results by the different types of content. So you might want, actually you might be thinking, man I really want to know about maramataka but I don't want to read those stink 80 page reports, I want to watch a video. <laughs> so you can then put maramataka in your search bar and then kind of filter out all the stink reports that I probably wrote. <laughs> um, so that was intuitive access. Um, this is just an example of the spatial capability. So each of the pieces of content inside the pataka could be given a pin on a map if it was specifically related to a place, for example, we we're doing monitoring at Moal. So you might put a pin on the map at Moal, add your data to that point so that you could go to this map, zoom into Moal and be like, oh, someone's done some mahi there. Kapai, so you can see the dot on the map leads you to the place, leads you to the content attached to that place, leads you to the specific content. So, you know, again, it's not like, I don't feel like none of this is groundbreaking, but I don't, know of um, any other mm, any other digital space that has um, been interrogated as hard out as this one to provide kind of all of the options that our whanau um, have asked for. Uh, anyway, I'll keep going. Um, so collections was another way. So this is all speaks to that kind of intuitive access. Because if you've, if you've got 200 things that you're trying to search through, having them organised in a way that makes sense to you, whichever way that makes sense to you is helpful. And so one of these, um, oh, this is, look there, you, ca you can see all of the, the summaries there. So those were our Pumahara summaries for Tauranga Moana. And you can kind of see them all lined up there. So you could put them all in a collection for each year um, and kind of organise them in that way. Another, this one is an example for the Asian paddle crab mahi. So that kaupapa has been going for a number of years and it, it merged into Ngātohu, but there's a lot of information that was gathered um, and a lot of products or resources that were developed. So you can kind of create those collections so that all of the information around Asian paddle crab sits in that one. Oh, man. Um, right. So... Again, a big part of the conversations we had with Fano was how do we safely and appropriately store uh, anything that we would like or they would like in the Pataka Kōrero, making sure that, first of all, you know, it's safely there digitally, like stored somewhere safe, um, that it's protected from loss in the digital world, which don't even ask me, but there's lots of things. I can give you one example, viruses on your computer, right, so that it's safe from those kinds of things. Um, and then the other one is who has access to it, when and how. Because if we think about, oh well I think about our tupuna, knowledge wasn't, um, wasn't hoarded, it was given, but it was given to certain people at certain times. And so I guess trying to lean on those whakaro um, 
we got to a place where any content, so if I am Matua Wayne and I've recorded myself singing a uh, moteatea and I put it into the Pataka Kōrero, I am the only one that has access to it unless I give someone else permission. And the way that we tried to approach it was that there's tears because some stuff might be for everybody. You might not care who sees it. It's actually to be given out to, to anybody who wants it. So there's a public level. Then there was a show level, what's well called show, but where you could assign your content visible so someone could find it, but not actually access it. They could access you and ask permission. So then you have that, that um, ability to either ask them some questions, see what they want it for, you know, actually go through a negotiation process in terms of the, the giving of your knowledge to somebody else. And then there's private, which basically is only I can see it, unless I share it with someone else. So that was how we structured the Pataka Kōrero to try to encapsulate as much as possible the concerns around safety of mātauranga. Oh yeah, I wonder if this will work. Okay, <laughs> so I'll just bring it up because it's very cool. Um, so, um, like I said earlier, one of one of the other ways that we wanted to, um, or we actively engaged in terms of preservation of the corridor, was. Um, Tito Waiata, Tito Karakia, so composing of songs or um, karakia or um, chants that encapsulated the knowledge. Um, and we were very lucky to have a talented Fano from Tokomaru. Um, Regan's daughter, Te Waiotu, has many, many talents, but one of them was animation. Her uncle, Kraudia, composed a short Waiata about some of the observations that they had made. And those two talents, plus I'm sure the guidance of um, Te Waiotu's Papa Regan here in the front, generated this short video. So I didn't want to talk over it because it's quite cool. But I don't know, is the sound going to just come from the computer? The screen? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to turn it up. On the laptop? Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's only 30 seconds, so you've got to be watching from the start. <laughs> So, I cannot claim that credit, that goes straight over here, but uh, um, I think it was a cool demonstration that, you know, in rangahau, and especially in science rangahau, our goals are usually to publish papers, but actually, how long does that last? Who reads them? <laughs> and so one of the things that was really important to our ropu um, and to our whānau was to generate, generate resources that meant something that were long-lasting and that could be utilised by our whānau for their whānau. Um, and so we actually did not create this. I cannot say that we as a ropu rangahau did it, but we asked our whānau if they would like to do something. And this is what they came up with. And we were like, whoa, <laughs> that's super cool. So um, I think that uh, as well as preservation in those digital places, I think the point being that, you know, we can work to preserve kōrero in different spaces um, that are more relevant to us inside of rangahau. Um, I'm hoping that um, my presentation is shortly finished, so I feel like it's late in the afternoon and I'm really pushing it with you guys.
Um, okay. Um, I suppose the other element of preservation and why I touched on it was actually preservation in our practice. In order to be able to observe the way that our tupuna did, we need to practice it regularly. <laughs> and it is something that we um, actively worked at in our kaupapa. And it's something actually that I personally really learned um, in my time in Hawaii. And their kōrero is makahana ka ike. Um, very similar whakaaro to māti mahi ka mōhio. It is in the doing that we actually know. So you can think about something all you like. You can wānanga for hours, but if you don't do it, you don't really know it. You haven't heard, felt, tasted, seen, uh, smelt that work. Um, so this was another uh, way that we looked at preservation of our knowledge. And this is just an example of the Asian paddle crab um, and laying up what our whānau had been observing, actively observing in their taiao against our maramataka. Uh, yay! Ngā mehe.